Good morning, all. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran downtown. We're thankful to have you here to worship with us today in our beautiful Father's house one week after Easter. We hope everyone's having a blessed weekend. Uh, brought, uh, I'd like to bring up, there was a uh, devotion this morning and one of my favorite Bible verses. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. How true, how true. Let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lay down your hurt. Lay 
Good morning, Trinity. Welcome to each and every one of you this morning. We're glad you're here. Pastor Eduardo is ill, not feeling, feeling the, the best, best, and so he will not be with us today. But we want to let you know we will pray for him, and he will be back in short time. So we'd love to have you stand and greet one another right now with a handshake of warmth and welcome. Lord and Savior, we thank you. We've come into your house, and this day is a day we gather in your name. We confess our sins. We've blown it. We think of the ways in which we've let you down, let our families down, let ourselves down. But Lord, today, we're here and we hear of your love and your forgiveness still, and how you came to seek and to save us. And like salve on a wound, you are here to help and to heal us and bring that healing to our body, the forgiveness that we are finding here in this service today. We ask that it would change our lives and allow us to tell others about this wondrous good news. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
Please welcome John as this morning's reader. Good morning, John. Good morning. The second Sunday of Easter, the first reading is from Acts 4, verses 32 to 35. The full number of those who believe were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with the great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold, and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Epistle lesson for today is 1 John 1, 1 through 2, 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and touched with our hands, could manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy might be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, and as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have sinned, we make him a liar. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the appropriation of our sins, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. And Holy Gospel this day is written in the book of St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, which would be Easter, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood amongst them and he said, Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples were glad to see that it was, that it was the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so now I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. And he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. But if you withhold the sins, they are withheld. 
Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But Thomas said, Unless I see his hands and the mark of his nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, Jesus' disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but rather believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed only because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may. During this next song, the prayer cards will be collected. If you have something you'd like the congregation to offer up to our Heavenly Father in prayer, pass it to the elder, pass the card, the yellow card, to the elder as he comes by.
Good morning. morning. Welcome to all of you worshiping with us today and online and those in here in person. Please take a moment to fill out the blue cards that can be found in the pew or fill out the online attendance form by scanning the QR code. This is how we keep our membership list up to date and we would love to drop you a quick note if this is your first time here. Interested in giving to Trinity electronically? Again, scan the QR code in the bulletin or text 407-809-1560 to get started. If you are in need of prayer or an elder or any other help, an elder will be available at the front right of the sanctuary after the service to pray with you. FCA, the next Fellowship of Christian Athletes Youth Ministry event, will be this weekend, Sunday, April 7th. We hope to see you there. Trinity will be hosting a volunteer appreciation lunch after church on Sunday, April 14th. That's next Sunday. The deadline to sign up is this weekend. If you actively serve at Trinity, we invite you to this event. A sign-up sheet can be found in the Narthex or in the Weekly. See Darlene Saban with any questions. The next Family Fun Night event will be held on Friday, April 19th at 6.30 p.m. We hope that you will join us for fine eating of food and fellowship. Our next voter meeting will be Sunday, April 21st, directly following the 11.15 service. Please plan to stay and take part in this meeting. And again, additional details are always in the weekly. Thank you. Good. Good morning. Good to see each of you and to be standing and upright, <laughs> and uh, we're very thankful for that. You uh, did hear that Pastor Eduardo will not be with us this weekend, and we pray for his speedy recovery. I also placed a note inside of the weekly concerning my upcoming surgery. If you have any questions, of course, feel free, or special things that you need me to be aware of in your life, please let me know. God's blessings to us as we worship and come together today. We're going to be looking at the gospel lesson, and I thought uh, it was pretty appropriate right after Easter. Uh, can, can you, you imagine, imagine that? that day going to the tomb and having, hearing the women uh, bring back all kinds of reports about Jesus being alive and the angel telling them to go to Galilee? But really, the fear was the thing that they were all dealing with. It gripped them. You remember that the disciples were really afraid for their very lives. It is my contention and belief that many of us have fears in our own lives as well. And sometimes we have to face them and they're difficult, they're scary. But I ask the question as I open today, what fears do you face? What locked doors are you hiding behind like the disciples were that night. The disciples feared for their very lives. The text that we read just a few moments ago, they may have been with Jesus, certainly, for over three years or about that. They may have heard his messages, seen his miracles, but they'd also seen him suffer and die a horrific, terrible death. He'd been crucified. He was killed, and they went into hiding because of their fears. They feared that, too, their life, especially now, since Jesus had been crucified and now his body was missing, they felt as though for certain the Roman authorities and the Jewish high priests and the like would be looking for them, coming after them, perhaps for them to suffer a fate worse or like Jesus. Perhaps the fears that you and I face are maybe different, but they're just as real and very real to us. I must admit that I am fearful of my upcoming surgery. How will I live with life on a non-weight-bearing foot for several weeks? How much pain will I be in? And for how long? I'm sure as you and I start to look at and change stories, I don't want to swap stories like my grandpa and my dad who argued over who took the most pills and who was really sicker once at the hospital. 
But uh, I want to just say that our fears are very, very real. And I know that many of you are facing real life issues as well. Your health is maybe waning. You maybe feel weak or all alone or helpless to help yourself. You fear what lies ahead. You don't know the future. It's unknown. In your mind, you imagine the worst. Others have lost loved ones and have only felt an empty spot at their table, in their home, and in their heart. Your heart aches for them perhaps also, as you seem to miss them so very much. Still others are facing going back to school or going back to work after a very disappointing situation that occurred. And they really don't know how to handle it. So how do they face, how do we face our fears? I want you to, believe, to see that the disciples were very fearful. But what was it that Jesus did to help them calm their fears? I'm going to start with, he showed up. He showed up. I think if our life is in such a place that we're so fearful, we better be asking Jesus to show up and to help us. On the evening of the first day of the week, that would be Easter, the doors were locked and the disciples were hiding behind them for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and he stood amongst them and said to them, Peace be with you. Jesus appears behind these locked doors, a fortress of doors, you might say, of fear, faithlessness. Can you imagine the words the disciples might have said? He's with us. He's alive. He showed them his hands and his side. He showed that he was alive. He asked them for something to eat so they could think and believe that he was not a spirit. Death had not defeated him. The cross had not crushed him. The power of the grave was gone. The very things that they too feared, Jesus had overcome. Now, simply because Jesus showed up. I believe that that is very true for us as well. That when we start to look at our own lives, we need Jesus to show up. And I think there's some very special ways in which he does show up. One of the things that I like to think about is that sometimes uh, life becomes a little bit overwhelming and all-consuming. We can become fearful, but when we invi are inviting Jesus into our life to show up, what might you do? I would suggest, number one, pray. Truly pray that Jesus will be with you as you go through this and to give you the strength, give you the courage, give you the boldness to be able to go through it. Second of all, I would encourage you to spend more time in his words. What does the Bible have to say? And as you read it, listen to it as though Jesus is speaking in your ear, addressing your situation. And as you pray for help, you will receive his calming. I recall often my own past prayers that God has answered, how he's gotten me through tough situations. And I'm encouraged by the fact that he was with me then, and certainly he promises never to leave nor forsake me. And as a result, I'm encouraged for this moment as I face these fears. I also went back to journaling. Journaling is simply writing down your thoughts, your fears, your all the things that are going on. They don't have to connect with pure, clean sentences grammatically. Don't go through and ask somebody to edit them. But I would simply say, write down your thoughts. You'll start to see after days of doing this how God is answering your prayers, strengthening and giving you strength, and write them down how you feel, what you're asking God for, where you need help. I turn those over to Jesus. And I want you to know he showed up calming my fears. We also resumed to our prayer Bible study this past week. 
You know, we had put that on hiatus during the season of Lent. Schedules were so, so completely incompatible, we had to. But our prayer Bible study stood there again as a blessing to me, calming my fears, being surrounded by brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want you to know the importance of worship during times of fear, how your brothers and your sisters are there to help and support and strengthen and encourage you. As you come forward to receive the Lord's body and blood, what does he do? He gives you that which forgives you of your sins and strengthens your faith. Listen to Jesus' words that he told the disciples who are fearful for their life. Peace be with you. Now in the Greek, that word peace is a very powerful word. It's a rene. And what it means is it describes a powerful peace that is so powerful that it pierces through whatever the problems are and it crushes all fear. It goes through that. It's like a, the sun and the eclipse. The light will cast out the darkness. Irene, peace be with you. God's peace pierces through and crushes all we fear including death. It dispels darkness, doubt, horrors, and hopelessness, giving us a peace that surpasses, as the Bible says, all human understanding. Jesus shows up, as he did with the disciples. He shows up in our world, in our lifetime, this moment, at this time, in real time. He's alive. He's real. And he will be with you. Not even death or the cross. And now Jesus gives you and me that all-powerful peace. I want you to know that we had a couple years ago, I believe it was now, a member that uh, we went to, to visit in the hospital, he and his wife. And... Uh, He told me what he'd heard. He had inoperable terminal cancer. There wasn't anything else the doctors could do. It was a terrible day. He thought it. But in the moment that we were there, it seemed appropriate for us to talk about Jesus and what comes next. That moment that seemed to be so dark and devastating, filled with doubts and horrors and fear and all of that stuff. We talked about Jesus being the resurrection and the life. We talked about how Jesus would take him from this moment of suffering and sickness to giving him life, life everlasting, where there's no more sickness, no more suffering, no more pain, and we talked with him about the certainty of the resurrection. We went from mourning to a meaningful discussion of what happens when we die. You know what he did that day? He planned with me his funeral, a memorial service to tell his family about heaven and about the hope that he had in Jesus. That is an eclipse. That is an eclipse of going from hopelessness and complete darkness to seeing the light of Jesus Christ, like the disciples did to see he's alive. Jesus showed up in the, uh, that hospital room, and there was hope that filled that room, that place. But Jesus didn't stop there. With the disciples gathered who'd gone from fear to faith, believing that he really was alive, our Lord and our Savior told the disciples, he appears again, and behind those locked doors, he shows up again 
And in the f- words of Thomas Zender, he says, Ta-da! Now, you had to be here to remember what that came from. But I want you to know that Jesus himself showed up to those disciples a second time that same evening. And what he did say was, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then he breathed on them. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that creates, sustains, and strengthens us in faith. And then he said to them, this is what I want you to do. This is why I came. This was my mission. This is what the cross was all about. Jesus says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so now I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. But if you withhold the sins, forgiveness is withheld. Do you hear what Jesus Christ gave them as their assignment? Those 11 disciples now were commissioned and appointed, chosen by Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, resurrected from the dead to go and tell this message to the entire world from the very city that they had crucified Jesus in. These disciples were tasked with the evangelism of the entire world with going and making disciples and baptizing and teaching them all things whatsoever Christ has commanded. As a Christian and as a member of Trinity Lutheran Church, we too are being built up as a royal priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Our baptism has meaning and purpose. Our membership is powerful as we go and we proclaim that which Christ has done for us to a world that sits in darkness. You and I are a part of God's reaching others, telling them about the excellencies of Christ, forgiveness of sins and repentance in Christ's name. Christ not only sent his disciples, he sends you and me. And he breathed on them and he gave them the Holy Spirit as he gives us the Holy Spirit in our baptism. And how God the Holy Spirit is at work right now here in this worship service. And how God the Holy Spirit will be at work as we commune together. God the Holy Spirit is at work as you read the Bible, open your prayer books, as you do what you do as a Christian But one of the things he also wants to make sure you do is to tell other people about him. God is working through you and through me. Christ who overcame death in the grave speaks to you saying, Peace I give you. As the Father sent me now, I send you. I send you in Christ's name to proclaim the excellencies of the forgiveness of sins. Now, there are going to be some people who are like Thomas, and I think you and I are all skeptics to a certain degree. And how many of you would say, yeah, I'm kind of like Thomas. You're from the show-me state. You know, unless I see in his hands the nail prints and put my finger there and put my hand up and into his side... I won't believe that Jesus is alive. Sometimes God has to go into extra innings with people, and often he will, to try to help sustain and create their faith in them, that we'll trust in Jesus. The purpose of the Bible is that so that you and I may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you and I have life everlasting. I was taken aback, not taken aback, but uh, I want to share with you in the epistle one little paragraph. That which was in the beginning, Jesus, which we have heard, this is John, the disciple, 
which we have seen with our own eyes, which we've looked upon and have touched with our own hands, concerning the word of life, Jesus, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was shown to us, that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you. We are writing these things, things so that our joy may be your joy and you may be made complete. Dear friends in Christ, God is very clear. Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And that's just for starts. He now wants to send you to share that wondrous good news. You might want to take a note. If you want to write anything down, maybe, who should I share this with? As soon as I get out of church, who could I text right now to let them know this wondrous good news? I hope and I pray that you will know of someone you need to share this wondrous good news of love and forgiveness. In Jesus' holy name, amen. The offering will be collected at this time. We contribute our gifts to the work of God's kingdom. We invite you to join us in song. Speak together the words of our faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bring before you prayers for the congregation. For Donna Lord, we ask for healing from knee surgery and that you would relieve her pain. And for, and for David, David Lord, recovering from several health issues, Lord, for, uh, grant him a speedy and successful recovery. And Lord, for Sheila, recovering from, uh, we ask for speedy recovery as she recovers from infection. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Doug and for Pastor Eduardo. We pray for their complete and total healing and that you will fill them with daily with your joy and peace. And for Kenny, as he faces important issues and decisions, Lord, guide him as he makes those decisions. They be to your for your joy, Lord. And for Nicole, needing extra prayers for several personal issues, Lord, guide her in her decisions also. God, we know that you have a plan and we are your hands and feet within your perfect plan. We beg you, Lord, that you will guide the call committee so that we will so we can do your will and not our will, Lord, as we call that pastor that you have chosen for us. Lord, we thank you for the, for the uh, FCA Trinity Youth Ministry. Please fill our church with young followers tonight and fill us with your joy and faith. Jesus, please watch over all who gather here in worship. Please help us to always see your light and your good news. Attack. Good news. <laughs> always see your light and your good news, although troubles closest to us can sometimes seem to eclipse your light, Lord. Lord, in your name we pray. O Lord and Savior Jesus, we praise you and we give you thanks, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you're always with us. Help us to be drawn close to you and not to fear. Help us to cast our eyes upon you, to fix our eyes upon you. You are the author and perfecter of our faith. Jesus, help us to trust in you. Show up in our world and outshine the scary shadows of fear that come into our life and world. Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are sick or suffering. We thank you for the recovery of Debbie Hawley and John Levinson. And they are encouragement to those of us who are facing surgeries. I thank and ask you to be with, O oh Lord, Alan Kimmel, as he faces surgery this coming week, and Doug King, who will be facing surgery a week later. Thank you for Debbie Hawley's recovery as well. Lord, in your mercy. And now we pray that prayer which you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had broken it, he gave thanks, and he gave it unto them, them, saying, saying, Take "Take and eat. This is my body, given unto death for you, for the remission of your sins and the strengthening of your faith. Jesus also took the cup, and after he had supped, he blessed it and gave thanks, and he gave it unto his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it. For this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is given and is shed for you, for the remission of all sins and the strengthening of your faith. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You You may be seated.
We stand for the benediction. Can you imagine what it would have been like standing in the room with the disciples on Easter evening when Jesus appears alive, shows himself, and says, peace be with you. Today, right now, you hear the words, peace be with you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you his peace and send you out to share it with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Join us as we sing our way out into our Father's beautiful and wonderful world.
go in peace and serve the Lord with joy.